So they only see the slides, they don't see me. And there should be some news where I'll okay. check with Al. I'll see if they can change the settings so that um, I just wondered. Yes, yeah, start video, then we can see us as well. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yes. That that one is behind for a moment. Is it? Oh, is it? No, it's one minute too, so it's more or less the same. <laughs> Pardon what? Nice. Yeah. No, I can't see anyone else in the waiting room. Sometimes I get stuck here. Now I can't go back into the waiting room because it's stuck. And this is working. Sorry, just testing okay. this. And now we're quite dark here. Yeah, oh, it's all right. I'll be uh, so silhouette. So okay. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> it's 6 p.m. Let's have a start. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming here. I see uh, lots of familiar faces, some new faces. Um, so I thought I'll just give a little introduction to the School of Mosaic. Uh, we've been here since 2017 and teach um, Mosaic in various um, lengths of courses from short course to a diploma, which is a one year course in Mosaic studies. That's actually the first higher education course in Mosaic. Um, pretty much in the English speaking world, because most of the mosaic training um, can be done in Italy, where mosaic is practiced in its uh, traditional form still. And um, so have a look on our website we, uh, about the diploma if you want to find out more, but also there's a wide variety of short courses with different techniques and focus um, focuses and themes of mosaic making. Um, a little bit about this um, talk um that's caroline uh, <laughs> here um we've had uh, this is part of a series of artist talks um which you find also on the website um uh, of four previous artist talks that happened and it's worthwhile checking out the other artists in the series and we have more artist talks um going forward till the end of this year which you're all welcome to attend and now i hand over to caroline Buriwala. Thanks Thank you. for coming here. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, friends, for attending as well. Um, I was meant to do this talk around November time, and then they shuffled up all the talk talk uh, hosts and uh, the speakers. And then it was like suddenly everyone stood back, and I was standing there at the front. So we're starting today with the first talk. Um, I'm going to give you a little brief history of my mosaic journey from being a painter uh, about 29 slides, I would suggest. Um, and as I now am a fully, fully blown mosaic artist. When I used to uh, run slide talks and presentations, I used to have a photograph of my mum only um, decorating the floor of our uh, doorstep as a, as a way of blessing the house. Um, and it was also a a way of blessing the presentation as well. So I thought it was a bit unfair on my poor old dad because uh, <laughs> he was also a huge inspiration to me and he was very uh, well versed in um, uh, Sanskrit and Hindi and all sorts of amazing knowledge um, to do with things that fed me um, in my own journey as a painter. 
Um, I was born and brought up in London, actually. I'm, I was born in uh, Isleworth, uh, lived in Hanworth and Felton, and then um, studied uh, my um, foundation course at Hounslow Borough College. Uh, I couldn't wait to leave London, I'm afraid to tell you. <laughs> so I actually went to Cardiff to do my degree, which I absolutely adored. Um, the, the, the degree was in fine art painting, uh, which in, also includes sculpture, photography and printmaking. And that I thought was a very good broad uh, fine art degree because it actually helped me on the foundations of what I do as an artist. And this, this, was in, uh, this was in the 80s. So for the last 35 years, I've been working in three dimensions as well as flat. And it's, it's incorporated everything that I've learned really. So mosaic for me has, if you look at it now, it looks like there was an obviously obvious um, train of thought sort of thing. That's mum and dad. <laughs> So I used to be a painter and my paintings are quite large. They're about four foot square, three foot by five foot. The, the painting I've really enjoyed and they're, they're about spirituality. They're very similar to how I mosaic now, but I would suggest that I now paint in mosaic. Um, I always wanted to, um, increase the the texture and the thickness of the paint so that it had that um, three dimensional or um, relief quality, but I could never achieve it. I wasn't like Gillian Ayres, the painter, had enough money to buy oil paint sort of thing and and make them really thick. But uh, I certainly I liked playing with three dimensional dimensionality and make it look like there was a depth and the color also helped me a lot and I liked playing around with color so that it looked more um you know thinking of opposites like reds maybe going regressing instead of coming towards you sort of thing but the, the mosaic as you can see I, the shapes and the way that they formed also there was a direct co correlation my work was about my spirituality, really. Um, I come from a Hindu background and um, I wanted to celebrate um, captured moments um, that I observed in my family, as well as um, thoughts about um, spirituality and, and a sense of togetherness. Um, um, captured moments was an important thing because it was like looking at looking at moments of prayerfulness but it's like a moment before something happens um this painting uh, i was saying about my dad influencing me i wanted to paint about um my cousin who died of uh, breast cancer and she was like an angel to me and um i wanted to describe her in a poem and my dad found this poem for me and i um and it was it was so beautiful. It was like um, a, a hint of a of a of a fragrance of a of a flower, and it was describing things like that, you know, um, in between two worlds. So I wanted to also use my dad's handwriting in that. So I projected that onto the canvas, and that's about five foot by three foot and looking at pattern as well. Pattern was very much important to me um, as it um, described my cultural heritage as well. I'm Gujarati and Gujarat is on the west coast of India, north of Bombay. And I look at a lot of pattern um, as a way of describing my own family background. So that kind of patterning is seen here where um, the two women are in prayer in action and prayer in uh, meditation but they're wearing bandhani saris um, and bandhani is like oh like a tie-dye really where um, knots are created to make 
these patterns on saris. That's how it used to be, and now it's obviously printed. But um, red and green and uh, gold was a very prominent Gujarati pattern and colour. So, moving on to the mosaics, you know, the, the, I started mosaicing back in about 1998. I was teaching um, art in the community, um, a HND course, and uh, I was teaching the students, young students, about 18 year olds, how to transfer your skills. And I like to very much promote simplification of an art form. I don't like to fluff it up with a lot of mysticalness. You know, I want to make sure that people are able to use skills very easily uh, without being flabbergasted by stuff. You know. So I showed them basically mosaic is sticking the thing on top of the thing and then filling it, the thing in. That's exactly what it is. You know. And at the end of the day, after a one day workshop, they really enjoyed it. And I asked them, how long do you think I'd been mosaicing? And they all assumed I'd been doing it for years. But that day was the first time I transferred my skills and showed them how to mosaic. And I quite liked the taste of it. <laughs> so I just thought, well, this, this, is, this could work really well for me. So I started to um, suggest when I was um, having planning meetings at schools, let's scrap the idea of doing a mural painting with the kids. Why don't we do a mosaic? Um, and this, those students, those HND students that I taught for the first time, they um, came back to me and showed me um, these tile nippers. And these tile nippers have been, um, well, I've gone around the world with them, really. And um, I've, sh I've shown, I've, I, they showed me how to use them. And uh, so... Uh, that's that was the the starting point of all the other mosaics that I worked on back then it was a case of using the cloth getting the tiles and smashing them up <laughs> and then placing them back down to make your own sense of an image but the feeling the actual process was the important thing for me because it was so calming and therapeutic and it's been said often times hasn't it you know how therapeutic the whole skill is um, and it was really good for kids as well to work in that art form it was only later on that I started looking at crockery and how it could um, inform me on pattern making and designs and uh, it's so inspiring and I've got a load of plates. <laughs> I've got shelves of this uh, different colors for each shelf sort of thing. But they inspire me so much because they, they give you an idea of texture with embossed um, tiles and, and crockery, like the edges of plates. Um, but they also move me forward to figuring out a composition and a design and this is what I love about it. It's, you know, yes, I could paint it on a painting, but it never had that immediacy for me, you know. And, it, and I'm still enthused about it, which for me tells me I'm on the right track. <laughs> um, when I was doing, um, when I was doing my master's in art, health and wellbeing, um, quite a few, um, suggestions were made about creating work for hospitals and I and I did quite a few in um, dementia units in uh, Birmingham <laughs> and this was this was brilliant because um, oftentimes you had um, patients that would be real when I was creating this that there was a patient that was reluctant to um, come out and have a look but when she did her whole her whole being changed and she was very much reminiscent <laughs> of the times that she saw in these crockery pieces because a lot of the the plates that I use are from the 70s so um it it brought her back to how how things used to be back when she was probably in her 40s 
And I remember talking to the nurse about this and we're both quite tearful about this and how, how it was important to have artworks that connect you and something like a plate could take you right back, can't it? You know, when you were a kid and you know, sitting at the table and having your breakfast, breakfast with your parents sort of thing. This really was an important uh, mosaic for me because I'd, I'd gone into my master's degree as a painter and I came out as a mosaic artist simply because I wanted to do something small because it was quite an academic degree. I wanted to do something small that I could cope with. That I didn't have to think big ideas as, paint, as a painter would, you know, and just have a little something to work on to give me that creative side of my brain some, you know, some, uh, some respite really, because it was pickling my brain doing an academic degree, I have to say. But, you know, coming out of that, and working in uh, mosaics opened up a whole new area that I'd never had before, you know, working in hospitals, which I've always wanted to do. Um, and working big scale as well, bigger scale than the paintings ever were. Unless, of course, I worked with um, um, students in a school to work on big uh, paintings, but they were sort of like folded up and put away. But at least you can't really fold away, which is a good thing. <laughs> so I developed more and more into looking at my background and my cultural roots and figuring out ways to use mosaic and, and enjoy the um, inventiveness of um, the crockery and figuring out ways of um, in bringing out the best of uh, the painting side really and, and think, still thinking in painting terms and you've got a mosaic there that shows the kind of scale that that one is so it and it becomes more um, you know people touch a mosaic don't they or they don't touch a painting and I think the thing the difference is that these these painting mosaics become more, um, they, people feel less inhibited to actually ask you questions about where you get things from and how do you do it? Because I don't, I've, I never found as a painter, people ask me about the whole process of where do you get your ideas from sort of thing. Another part of, um, this whole new um, avenue of being a mosaic artist was to uh, run craft fairs. And I found that really, really interesting because, you know, after doing big exhibitions and touring shows, I started looking inward and smaller little compartmentalized little bits of art sort of thing. And I really enjoyed that. I found that quite freeing really. Um, and it became more accessible to people. Um, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't, again, that barrier, but it meant there was, there was a, a chance of using a little bit of joy and a little bit of um, quirkiness in my work. My work used to be quite serious as a painter, I found, um, whereas now I could use my sense of humour and, uh, and be a bit cute with the work sort of thing. And that made it, you know, people, people felt it was much more, um, I, felt, I felt that people uh, were more, um, they could be, you know, they can access to it. And the bees as well, the bees became my little theme. And the theme really was about sustainability and about, you know, uh, environmental issues. So I, I love that because I, I don't think I'd ever used a bee in my own paintings, really. It gives me a, a broader chance to be a bit more flexible with my work as well. Instead of, I felt like I was honing in on one section when I was a painter. But I feel like I can travel all over the place with ideas and thoughts. I love that. Now there's a word, there's a word here. 
and I have to look it up because I can never pronounce it. Joe knows it. What is it? Parandilo? Parandolia. 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 Thank you. So paradoilia is basically when you can see uh, bunny rabbits in clouds or the man in the moon. You know, you see things in different things. And um, I see things in crockery. So, <laughs> so basically, I've, this Kilncraft piece of crockery, this, this cup has taken me all over the place. So I love, I love Kilncraft. So um, basically I wanted to cut out a little piece of this. You know how it is, you know, when you want to cut out a certain mm -hmm. thing to make the right thing. So I'm cutting it out and it breaks and it doesn't go the way you want it. But I look down and I see an eye. I see an edge of an eye. And, and I thought, oh my goodness, that's an eye. So from then on, I started looking more and more into things. I mean, people would go, oh, Caroline, you wouldn't be inter interested in this play. I goes, oh no, I would, I would. <laughs> <laughs> so, so things like this, you know, I'd look at that and think, oh, they're bird, they're the they're bodies of birds, you see. So I'd cut out these and then I'd put little legs on them and I'd put a little head on it and then it becomes a bird's head, you see. So, and then, you know, I, I just love it. I just look at things and see things differently. And that's another thing. It just, it just opens out different viewpoints of how things can travel and move on, you know. Carol, yes. Can I ask you a quick yeah, please. When you're doing an outdoor one, do you have to think about the property in a different way? I mean, if it's outdoor proof, that sort of thing, or do you just go with it and just sort of? I found that that's a good question. Thank you, Anne. That I found that if I worked on a wall, it's fine. Um, but I use external grade adhesives mm -hmm. and grouts and glues. Um, I use render mesh, which is a fiberglass mesh. I never buy mosaic mesh from Hobbycraft mm. because that's so flimsy. Mm. I, I tend to use things that are like one meter wide and 50 meters long yes. sort of thing. And it's, it's thicker and tougher. So with, with the crockery, yes, if you put plates flat down, like on a coping stone, it, it will it might break. Yeah. I mean, I find that porcelain is good because porcelain is high fired over, mm -hmm. um, over a thousand degrees. So, you know, usually about 1200 degrees, but um, so far it's been okay with, um, with crockery mm -hmm. if you put it mm -hmm. vertically on a wall, mm -hmm. which is good, which is good because actually I've used teapot lids on walls to make my teapot lid flowers, you know, <laughs> and uh, they haven't, they haven't blown or anything. And, you know, often, to, and I've actually used, hush, hush, I've actually used kitchen and kitchen tiles and um, bathroom tiles for outside. Mm -hmm. And, and these days I do use porcelain tiles, but uh, actually I do think, I suppose if it's on a wall and you've got the heat coming through from, out inside coming out it, I've not found any crackle or um, blowing of, of tiles or you know you. yeah and please feel free to ask any questions yes oh yes so what happens is that on facebook i'll say i've got and they'll say i've got some tiles or you know would you like these and then i'll see the photo and you know or there's a, there's a friend of mine in laos that has these you know like great big uh, buckets of crockery i don't know i don't know how they where they get them but you know i've had i've had buckets of crockery come my way or I open my front door and there they are on my doorstep <laughs> yeah I, I walked you know. past someone's door and she had all lovely crockery flowery stuff outside and I was walking the dog and I knocked on the door and I said I haven't got a bag but I'd love to see some crockery she said 
put me off in the statue. I said, no, no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny. When they say to me... She didn't want it, so what's the big deal? I know, I know. It's, it's funny because, like, all my crockery I get from secondhand shops, you know, car boot sales, flea markets, the whole shebang, you know. And, uh, you know, people go, oh, you're not going to break it. And it's like, well, <laughs> nobody wanted it in the first place. But, I mean... I mean, obviously, there's certain things I'll never cut or break because they're so gorgeous and beautiful. And, you know, my whole crockery set in my kitchen is yum, you know, <laughs> and it's a real joy to actually eat off, you know. It's become like a magpie. You see it outside the set. Yeah. yeah. You can't leave it there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't. No. You can't. But sometimes you have to go downstairs into the kitchen and open those cupboards because you need some pieces. You need, you, need to, you need to have more birds on your mosaic, you know. But um, yeah, well, or when people say, do you smash those? Do you smash those tiles? And I thought, if you can smash a tile to make that shape, give me that yeah. hammer, you know? So, yeah. But it's great because now that, you know, the, it started off with, with, like I say, with this side biter, but uh, I've increased on the tools. But actually, this, this has taken me all over the place. But I tend to teach people how to use this tile nipper in four different ways i think Anne's one of the one of my <laughs> ex-students <laughs> and um you know i love my workshops because uh you, get, you know you not only have about five people around the room from different walks of life wanting to know how to mosaic but every single person will have a different way of interpreting how they they see the world through the same materials and that's what i love about it you know, um, it's uh, and then I have all sorts of unctuous deliciousness, as I call it, you know, little little bits of glass beads and whatnot, you know, uh, where people can then enjoy figuring out different ways of cutting and uh, embellishing their mosaic, you know. Do love it. The workshop looks very different to this now. Um, it hasn't got that 1950s table. I sold that to a friend now. So it's, it's got lots, lots of shelving and it's just, it's out there. And during lockdown, it was delightful to tidy up actually. <laughs> so um, the movement of, um, you know, from painting, doing that master's degree, and then during the master's degree, doing a series of drawings and the drawings were for the garden goddesses and the drawings were my little, little hint of hope, my little grain of hope that all will be well after this academic year when you're doing all this mashed up brain stuff of acad academia, that I knew that the, the, <laughs> the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel will be doing my own work afterwards. So I did a series of what I call my garden goddesses. And the inspiration was really my garden because it's a 15 feet wide garden, but it's really long as well. So I was thinking about how I use my way of um, designing my garden and how I, how I approach my garden as a gardener and also how it would tie in with my mosaic making so basically i i was thinking right how can i design my garden within shapes and are these shapes inspiring me to create figures in there so i was i was thinking of it that way so the shapes i was drawing was like oh i can see i can see a figure there she's doing a a design on the floor like this lady here you know and she's doing a rangoli, um, which is a floor decoration, uh, which you'd have at Diwali or at a festival or a successful harvest. Um, oftentimes I've, I've used this idea and uh, I find that really important. It seems to be a recurring idea for me. And sometimes it's about drawing in, at the in in the center and the halfway through the process or sometimes it's about all the thoughts and ideas that you might have 
that moment, that split second moment before you start drawing. So it's, it's, it's all about the process again. You know, it's all about that magic that happens and you don't know where it's gonna go until you start. And then that last second informs the next second and then the next second. And then suddenly you've got something that is completely, you know, unpredicted really. And just, you know, you just, oh, I wasn't expecting that, but that's working, you know, and I love that. And this figure here, um, I called her Nanima. Um, Nanima means grandmother. Now I had this drawing of this lady who was going to have her hands working around soil and then perhaps having some plants in her hands. And then a friend of mine messaged me because I popped this on Facebook, you know, and said, um, I want that drawing. Don't do any more drawing on it. I want it. How much is it? I thought, I don't want to sell the drawing. I thought, I said, oh, 350 quid. You know, I knew he couldn't afford 350 quid because I wasn't, I wanted not, I didn't want to sell it at that price. And he said, oh, I can't afford it. I goes, well, you seem to be quite desperate to have this drawing. Tell me about what, what you're thinking. What, why, are you, why are you wanting this so much? And he said, uh, well, my grandmother just died. And she, the drawing really reminds me of my grandmother because she worked so hard, it was as if her hands had disappeared. And because I hadn't drawn the hands yet, because I was just ready to, and I thought, well, that's it then. I, I, I can't continue with the drawing. I've got to have the hands like this. So the hands are either in, in earth or in water. I've made it quite ambivalent, actually. Some people think that she's got her hands in, you know, like a washing up bowl <laughs> or, or actually in water or, you know, when you're trying to get out that pond weed, you know, mm. pond weed, it's brilliant. <laughs> but I found that so beautiful that I couldn't actually go any further with the drawing. And I thought, well, there we are. It's, it's, it's stuck now. It's, it's, mm. it's stilled itself to be the idea. And I like that actually, you know, I'm, I love the fact that he's an artist, but you know, I love the fact of having friends coming over and giving me their viewpoint of where a, a work in progress is, because I like that fluidity where people might inspire me, you know, to go forward. And I think that's a good thing really, because we are inspired by everything. You know, I don't see why, it, the whole idea of an artist working in their own little garret, you know, somewhere in a little art room somewhere, it doesn't exist really because we're always inspired by everything and anything. So, da da da, Chile. I I applied for this project in Chile and. Um, Isadora Paz Lopez was an amazing mosaic artist that I saw from about 2011 whilst I was doing my master's. And, and because I was reinventing myself sort of thing, I was making sure I was on people's radar. So I was inviting them to like my page and I was liking their page and writing comments and asking them about their work on this, that and the other. So Isadora was working on a beautiful project um, towards Puente Alto, towards the edge from Santiago um, uh, city centre to Puente Alto, creating about 64 pillars. When I say pillars, I mean huge, you know, like 10 feet, 12 foot wide pillars that would be under like it's like spaghetti junction basically you know and getting her team of 60 artists to work mm. on different aspects of uh, flora and fauna that might be endangered in Chile and the work was exquisite the way she was cutting was amazing and she was she had a particular skill of placing tiles next to each other and using normal tiles like kitchen and bathroom tiles because obviously the weather is a little bit warmer there than here, you see, especially in Santiago. Um, and then she invited 
um, people to apply to the first urban mosaic intervention around the world. So over 600 people applied and uh, I applied and I got one of the places. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I was one of the 60 from around the world. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just brilliant. Um, there's my name, number 10. <laughs> um, it was 23 um, artists from Chile as well. Um, and we all had about a metre um, each on, on a wall. And we, it was just amazing. It, and it was the town hall in, uh, in Puente Alto. Can you imagine a random town hall in Britain? And they said, <laughs> we've got this blank white wall. What shall we do? You know, <laughs> shall we invite artists to create their own gorgeousness? You know, what a pity, eh? <laughs> you know, I often see blank walls in Britain going, <laughs> I wanted. <laughs> so the original idea was that, um, well, the original sketches were flora and fauna and all sorts of different things all over the walls, you know, at, at about, well, officially a metre. There's a little bit more than a metre, really. And, um, but there, there came a point that she had to control 60 artists. Now, can you control 60 artists? <laughs> nah. So she said, and, and when, I, when I gave her my drawing, I, I'd looked at, um, I'd looked at some uh, flora that, uh, like a puya flower, which was gorgeous blue. And I thought I'd zoom in on that. And I'd done my drawing because she'd said it was um, 120 centimeters. So I thought, oh yeah, four foot, right. So I had the drawing already and she just winced and nah. <laughs> and I thought, right, okay. But on the flight over to Chile, um, I was drawing as you do at 3 a.m. in the morning. And I had this drawing. I said, how about this one? And she said, just do it then, just do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I went for it. And that drawing um, became this mosaic. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I did this in a week. <laughs> I did this in a week. And she just couldn't believe me because I was just like, I was like, right, every day I was like, today I will do the plan. Tomorrow I'll do, the, you know, I, I started off with the face and then tomorrow I'll do, I'll do the hand next and I'll do, 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 do. So it was just, it was working so beautifully. And, and this is actually, you know, all of us working and then you're stopping and you're chatting with other artists and people that you know and, you know, this kind of thing. And I love that whole experience. Right at the beginning, we had the mayor meeting us and, and he was shaking people's hands and I was thinking, this is going to be a long day if he's talking to every artist, you know. Um, but then they would, after they'd got to a certain number on the list, they they went to me and I thought, well, I'm 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 not next. I'm Jay. I mean, it's just you know they've just jumped over to me and and I was shaking his hand and all this and introducing myself and that. And then in the evening, I said, um, it's a pity they only had about fifteen people to introduce and they didn't have much time to introduce all of us, you know, all the 60 artists. And they all looked at me like, you don't know, do you? I was like, what? It's like, you're one of the main artists here. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that was lovely. I had no idea because this is what the internet does, you see, because there I am slowly just like building up an audience and figuring out and showing people, because that was my thing. I want to show people how to do it. I'm not charging. I'm not doing that whole, what's it called? Um, what's it called on YouTube? Patreon in, and in, stuff. Patreon, yeah. Patreon and stuff like that. I don't want to do that. I want to. I want to give my knowledge free, so that people can freely carry on with it and go with it because that's how I learned. Because I taught myself really, but I taught myself with the whole background of sculpture, photography, printmaking, and painting, but. It was bit by bit, you know, the students on the HMD course showing me how to cut a tile, first of all. And then actually 16 mosaic workshops later, those chaps said, you know, you could use the back of it. And it's like, oh, OK. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I started developing, oh, yeah, there's four ways of cutting a tile. This is how you do it. Yeah. And then it develops like that. So by then 
I was only using this tile nipper as my as my go to to make this. And then I then I saw another mosaic artist there, Melanie Watts, you know, Melanie Watts mosaics was going, you know, almost like having a fag in one hand and going like this, cutting away. And I was like, what is this thing? <laughs> what is this beautifulness? And she said, oh, it's called a score snapper. You can get it at this Home Depot place. It's like being q across the road. It's brilliant. I was like, I want this. And it, it didn't have a big wheel like this does. It had a tiny little one and it was just so good. It was just so good. All this time I'd been using just this little bubba and just like making these little shapes. But now it's like rock and roll. What do you you call it again? It's a score snapper and it's by Ruby. And, you know, it doesn't have to be by Ruby, no. but um, other, other brands are available, you know. But actually the third thing that I use is um, a glass cutter. Glass scorer, sorry, and I don't use um, oil thinning oil in there. It's it's just purely the tiny little um, wheel because I used to use a silver schnitt. We're getting technical now, yeah. so I used to use a silver schnitt glass scorer. And what I liked about that, I should have brought one, um, is that it had a little ergonomic handle, so it felt like you were just drawing with your finger, you know scratching into the tile and then snapping it with your tile nipper. So yum, basically. <laughs> so I work in, you know, I've, I've been doing school workshops since about 1990, really. And uh, I love it. I love working with children. I love giving them the the possibilities. I wish I had this when I was eight years old. I tell you, where would I be now? <gasps> where would I be now? <laughs> so, you know, and unfortunately, because it was a three form entry at this particular school, um, um, they said, well, we'd love the children to work on mosaic. But if we give them a chance to do the drawing side and get all the designs for you, can we do it that way? And it's, yeah but I'll do the drawings with them so that they can choose. Because there's nothing, nothing worse than somebody saying, you can't do this and you can't do that. So I said, here are some patterns and designs from different cultures. And I want you to just do your own drawing version of it, you know? So, you know, it was like, can we do that? Because of course you could do it, <laughs> you know? So it was like giving them access to be creative. And that is what schools should be doing more of, you know, being more creative so they can branch out and broaden their minds. So once I had, you know, 90 drawings from these three, this three form entry, I started amalgamating the drawings and figuring out what the rep rep repeats were or what the, you know, what the drawings I loved, you know, and stuff like that, and adding adding them on because quite a majority, quite a lot of the students, I wouldn't say all ninety of them inspired me, but you know, quite a lot of them had a little bit of um, synergy with each other, you know. So they, um, it, it was, it was a brilliant project, and as you can see, it's quite big, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's in the school. Um, as you go up the, the first flight of stairs, it's, it's along the wall there. Beautiful. And I also did a logo for them as well, which is in my portfolio uh, at the front of the, house, uh, front of the school. Is uh, been done on ply? It's on plywood, yeah. It's uh, 18 mil plies. It's quite heavy, <laughs> but it's all internal as well. So uh, they, they created a, a framing structure and drilled it onto... Uh, onto the, um, the structure sort of thing. That was stunning. I loved that. I loved doing that project. Mm -hmm. It was so freeing, really. Now, this was a gem. Um, <laughs> um, just the road along, this couple sent me an email and said, uh, we've seen your work on your doorstep and on your walls. And We'd like one too. <laughs> so can we come and talk to you about um, commissioning you? It's like, yeah, <laughs> which was lovely. So they were only one street away and uh, they wanted to talk about 
um, they, they liked the fox that I'd done and all the other quirky figures. And halfway through it, though, they wanted to have unicorns and dragons. And I was like, well, well I thought we had I thought we'd agreed on, you know, woodland creatures and wildlife rather than fantasy stuff. But I actually did a dragonfly with uh, dragon crockery in there <laughs> and uh, a unicorn um, with uh, in, in the hair as well. So, it was, yeah, I, I hid them. I hid them away so they could see mm -hmm. them. But it was that was a gorgeous project, really. So, Caroline, what substrate did you use? So, actually, I did use plywood on that one. Oh. Yeah. I, now, I wouldn't recommend plywood to have as an outside mosaic. So far, so good. Because I did this, I did this in 2018, 17, 18, and we had an edging all the way around, a plastic edging, which I used um, caulking glue as well. And then we drilled it directly onto the wall. And so far, they haven't come back and said, it's fallen off or it's cracked or broken. Uh, and these um, were directly, um, this tile tapestry I did directly onto the wall. They're floor tiles, so they'll, they'll be fine with glass as well. So yes, I was thinking about this mosaic as I was going through the, the slides last week. And, hmm, do I dare to ask them? But I did see, I did see um, the gentleman and I did ask him uh, if uh, everything was okay during lockdown and he said it was absolutely fine you know so that's all right <laughs> so I do a lot of work for charity so um, the first project I did was uh, called the big hoot and it was a fundraiser for the children's hospital you often see loads of these figures everywhere it's fiberglass resin figures and they're often painted um so this is back in 2015 i did the big hoot um i really 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 wanted to do this project because it was in birmingham and it was a it, if this doesn't land me on the map of mosaicness as well as being an artist local what will you know so um i were i didn't get through the first um application and it was whilst I was in India, I got this email and they said, uh, what, you know, we can't believe that you haven't got this project, but Birmingham City Council have asked if uh, you could work with uh, adopted and foster children. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> so that was brilliant. So I did uh, lots of little um, uh, satellite kind of workshops with, uh, with youngsters in uh, foster homes around Birmingham. So all their ideas, I then printed off. Um, I, my friend Charlotte Clark is a, is a glass artist. So she made decals of these drawings. I, I did a composite of them. So we had A4 size tiles, and then she made decals, which is like um, a print, you know, you, it's like a design on a, on a well, that's a decal. And then that would be fired on in a kiln. So I all these bits and bobs are literally the children's drawings fired onto the tiles. How good is that? So all these children go, oh, it's my drawing, you know. So it was, that was beautiful. I love that. So their work, so it's, it, it, what, what the d design was at the the front and the back was a, a row of children holding hands like a paper cutout sort of thing and then I infilled with my own designs so yeah I love that yeah and that that was the fourth highest sale in that um, auction mm -hmm. and um, they raised a quarter of a million in the auction itself and then they had more sales after that so was sold for ten thousand pounds so if I, if only i tell you what though some of these auctions um i, I know one of the grommets got sold for um thirty two thousand, and that was like the price of my house when i sold it in olden so i was like what <laughs> and then after that 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 afforded me to go and work with a group of ladies in hounds uh, from hounslow at, um, at uh, Hampton Court. 
how gorgeous is that as a gig? Mm -hmm. you know? So I had four sessions with, um, with these ladies and we created these designs and then I worked on the mosaic and that was in 2017. It was called Gnomes Unearthed and they had uh, 14 of these gnomes and each, each group worked on these. And then you had a little button here and it, it tells you a little part of the story of that part. Cause I think they were celebrating, is it 500 years of, uh, of um, Hampton Court Palace at the time. So um, they had a little story of where the gnome was and, and about that particular area. So that was lovely. And it, um, that area would have had a huge birdhouse. So his, uh, his front piece there was like a birdcage. So, you know. And then in 2000 and uh, so that's 15, that's 16, yeah, 17, in 2017, um, I did Sweet William Bear. And he was supposed to be Shakespeare. And he was meant to be. <laughs> It's meant to be in Shakespeare's garden in Bearwood, where I'm from, you know, where I live now. And, uh, and I thought it was all wrapped up and sewn up as an idea. But my sponsors, um, LDCs, Lloyd's Development Capital, they wanted that bear to be on the footfall of, so that everybody could see it. So actually, it's a pity it wasn't in Bearwood because it'd be my, like my hometown sort of thing. But it was by the cathedral in Birmingham. So I still see the shadow where this uh, block was. It's my brother's weapon. <laughs> but that was really good. So that's been, that was auctioned off. And I'm really, that was voted best in show as well. Yay! <laughs> so I was pleased with that. I was pleased with that. So I'm, I love it. I know. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> so. I just want to briefly show you <laughs> some photograph of my home. So this is my mosaic house. And this is the work that I've been, you know, obsessed with <laughs> since buying the house, really. Um, it started off with a mosaic by the back door only because that back door wall was just gray and they didn't, there wasn't anything on it. And I didn't think back then that, I'd be mosaicing all over the place, you know, <laughs> honest, honest, honest. <laughs> so basically, um, I remember doing that mosaic because I used to feel guilty that I was working during the day sometimes on the mosaic because work for me was painting. It wasn't, it wasn't mosaic making. So yeah, it was a real transition actually of how I was thinking what work was. So it con continued with mosaic making with bathroom and kitchen tiles and crockery. This is the front of the garden as well. And uh, using a little bit of Scrabble letters as well. So I was really, and, and um, cups as earrings and things like that, you know. So I wanted, to, I wanted people to walk past it and, and feel attracted to it, you know. I wanted to spread joy. That's what I wanted. A little bit of love and joy. So, so here we are in lockdown. <laughs> so, so even the ceiling. So lockdown landing, I call this. This is my lockdown. Landing. It's absolutely all. This is a this is a photograph taken by um, my friend Steve, who's who works for a local newspaper. And it's it's all covered now. <laughs> all, co all of this is covered now. All of this is covered now. I've got to grout it still, ladies and gentlemen. I've still got to grout it. I've got a plan. Say again. Did you have some No, no. There's no subsidence. It's ever so good. I, yeah. There's no lean to or anything like the leaning mosaic house of. Uh, and did you cut all those by hand? I did. Wow. I did. Oh, well, wow. some of them are cheating objects. You know, there's a little bit of the old uh, ready-mades there, oh, yeah. you know. So a little bit of combination of that with all these are handmade. But I started with this when I still had the COVID. 
I was ahead of uh, trend, you know. <laughs> is, I, that, I, is that have you got gold in that? Yeah, it's got gold mirror in it and everything. But and I didn't. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I was working yeah, on the flat. table. Yeah. yeah, I was working flat on the table, and I was I was working for about an hour or two, and then having a little lie down because I still had the COVID. You see, and it was it was March twenty twenty, and I, you know I I thought I had the flu. You know, I mean, nobody knew, did they? So uh, it it was uh, yeah, it developed, and <laughs> so I haven't done that side yet. I'm thinking of actually getting some light sensitive. Um, strip lights, you know, those LED ones, so that it would go ping against there, but using lots of mirror as well. Yeah. And uh, and a lot of these Finlandia plates um, got, <laughs> got nibbled, and I, I did a lot of cutting of that. And there's, there's quite a lot of videos on how I cut a plate on, on YouTube and everything, so. And then it goes towards doors now, you see. So, <laughs> so I've done some walls, now it's the, the doors. And uh, I, I'm very lucky because I found a company that actually designed, I, I did the design of the door. They actually created the door for me. And uh, it's a double glazed unit there that I created a glass on glass. This is all glass on glass. It's not stained glass traditional because that would drive in loop, wouldn't it? <laughs> Doing all that, reversing all that. So it looks like this, you oh, see. Wow. How delightful. So I took this photograph on, uh, on Saturday and I have no idea where that photograph is anymore. <laughs> so it, it vanished on my computer. Oh. Saturday afternoon, I have no idea. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, did I, did I go? There we are, forward, there we are. And another part of my work is continuing with mandalas. Um, a mandala is a circular form of prayer, really. But I've really enjoyed these commissions. And uh, my friend Margaret um, asked me to do her a mosaic. Um, she did commission. She has commissioned me to do one for her local Methodist church. And the church was um, having a think first before they made up their minds. And she said. You know, whilst they're thinking, let's get you doing one for me, you know. So I've really enjoyed that so much so that I decided to do my own. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's my version. Then then these started to pop up. I don't know where they came from. So and I've used a lot of the old Picassiette there, the old nicked from plates. So lots of plates were used in this. It's a 10 foot by about five foot wall maybe six foot actually so yeah and I've just graduated this ladies and gentlemen <laughs> it's taken me yet you know I started this in 2017 and only was working on this uh, last year so I haven't grad and you know it the grout, grout is the weakest link, really, in terms of mosaicing. It's it's the tile adhesive that does all the work for you. Yeah. More about that another time. But yeah, so yeah, they're my teapot flowers. You can hang things off it, everything. The crazy birds and everything. You'll have to come round and see it. <laughs> so this is the point where I say escape because this photograph was created by um, a photographer, um, Craig Bush, as part of the 100 Masters. People um, voted for or suggested who could be uh, one of the 100 Masters in the Black Country, which is where I'm from, in Birmingham and, and all the satellite towns around that area, like Stourbridge, et cetera, Wolverhampton. Anyway. I was nominated as one of the 100 masters. And to be a 100 master means that you're actually speaking as an expert in your own field. So mine was my mosaicness. So I, I can now press escape. And this is, this is the last part of my little talk here is the film, because the film actually um, became viral. It got, it's not, and I don't mean COVID. <laughs> so it's uh, it's now got about 10 million views. Wow, 10 so million. yeah, 10 million views. Should we make it bigger?
just I can't see it. Down, figured out how much I needed per month to pay. Sorry, we're just um, sharing the right screen. Oh. Is this the YouTube screen? Yeah. That should be it. Yeah. Wake up. Let's start from the start. Ta -da. Thank you. I just sat myself down, figured out how much I needed per month to pay the mortgage, the bills, and food. Simple as. That's only something. I always say. <laughs> Do you realise somebody didn't want that cup and shoved it in a second hand shop because they didn't want it anymore? And although I can't recycle everything in the world, <laughs> there's crockery, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I put a step by step approach of my work in progress. When I mosaic, people can see two pieces of crockery with a tile and a, and a bit of unctuous deliciousness, as I call it, or beads and whatnot. And I go, I can see that. I can do that. Art is not about passing a blooming exam. It's about what you feel. You can't mark that. I was saying to folks in workshops, look, we're not doing the Sistine Chapel. It's day one of you holding this time in, but we're walking away with a new skill, you know, and that way I'm empowering them. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, stop sharing then. <laughs> Right. Oh, is, oh, oh. is there something stop, going stop, on? Yes, stop it! Stop it! <laughs> wait, wait, wait! We need to stop that. <laughs> oh, right! Thank you so much, Kim. Thank this you. Is super inspiring. I'm sure everyone mm -hmm. here is very, very, very inspired and has some more questions for you. Um, so I would uh, say over to the audience for any questions that you have for Caroline, if you. Lift your hand and then there we go. Yeah. I'll type the question in the chat so people know. Oh, lovely. What, what the question is. Yeah. Fabulous. Um, would you say that it's, yeah, mosaic needs to be about having the, yes. <laughs> That's a quick answer. Of course you can, of course you can. Because, you know, it, it, you know, we were children, we created, we didn't have a degree then, did we? You know, we were two years old, one years old, playing and figuring out what colour looks nice next to each other, each, with, next to each other. You know, I, you know, um, there's, when I used to teach, I always said, look, I'm not going to mark your work. I'm going to give you comments to help you develop to not good, bad, but how to improve in your own style, you know? So, you know, as a teacher, I never sort of did that kind of grading system. And I never said, you can't, you know, I was told I can't, I got an E at A-level art. <laughs> and when I, you know, when, 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 as you know, when I used to teach A-level, I used to teach A-level, I, I taught degree students, I taught foundation students, they were like, yeah, well, it's all right for you, Miss, because you've, you know, got exhibitions, you've got, you know, you've got probably got an A, an A level art. So. Now, let's think of the other side of the spectrum. It's like, what do you mean? I've like, oh, got an E, I've got an E. And they're like looking at the posters, looking at the work and the portfolio, and it doesn't compute. And I said, well, you know, it's not about a little, little mark, you know, and a tick. It's not about that. It's your own tick. It's your own way of saying it. You know, I learn from mistakes, you see. And the more mistakes you make, the better. It's a secret to life, you know. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> do you always draw what you mostly eat first? Or do you ever go about thinking, okay, I've got pieces, I'm going to put them together. Just like that. Ah. ah, well, that's reminded me. I did a commission for a, for friends and uh, 
I did have lots of crockery and I was just going to pop, 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 pop next to each other. I couldn't do it though, because I had to keep on placing. I had to make my own meaning and it had to make sense to me, you know? I, I do have drawings that start me off, but that doesn't necessarily mean it'll go in that direction either. So it has a fluidity. I let myself off, you know what I mean? I don't say it has to be like this. You know? Yeah. Flexibility. Any more questions? Yeah, 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 go yeah, for yeah. it. Like the, the main tips when you Like the main things you have in mind. Well, you see, you know, I always step back for when, I, when I'm working on a big piece anyway. I'm thinking about scale, shape, form, color, what, what you can see from a distance, what is important to see from close up as well as from a distance. It could be two different things there. You know, it's a long question to answer. It's a question to answer in a long way, really. Um, hmm. Does that answer the question? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, like, speaking from what we teach on the diploma, there's so many ways of scaling anything yeah. depending on, yeah. you know, what kind of work you do. Like, we're doing this uh, a big project here, London Bridge project, and um, the scaling that we use is a app uh, a, a browser app called rapid resizer and it's oh, wow. it just prints out everything in a3 or a4 pages wow. and that's no, for but... some images <laughs> so there are many things that mosaic artists can share about yeah. their techniques because some people yeah. put it in a uh, um mm. uh, in a what do you call it well, i use an overhead Asta? projector i use an overhead projector actually oh, so yeah Asta, so if i'm if I'm drawing something small on acetate, then I'll project it on. Like um, um, on my on my social media, I've got um, you you know YouTube channel and what's it called Instagram and Facebook and all that business. And it has it has um, it shows how I've done that where I've used a projector to draw out to start off with and then I'll change it yeah so it's it's using it as a tool I hope overhead project and it's an old one as well it's not fancy yeah some people would draw things in squares and then just yeah, uh, replicate gridding. it grid yeah. sorry I forgot the word yeah. oh gridding okay okay <laughs> I read yeah, the, no, I use the German word well. I use grids as well for the tree of life um, yeah. drawing yeah. that I'm doing at the moment for the mosaic I, I've used um started off with a grid because I wanted to make some kind of uniformity and then decided I don't want it uniform because there's meaning with the, you know, asymmetrical as well, you know. Yeah. Well, I just make a comment just saying, I follow you on social media and you're just what it says on the tin. Oh, boo boo. Thank you, darling. Yeah. Thank you. But, um, you know, what I really respect is the way that you do share everything. Yes. You know, yeah. um, this is done with ink in this way, that way, by this way. And it's so inspirational and helpful. And you watch it just ropes. And so that's been really unbelievably helpful. Oh, thank you. I really you. appreciate that. I yeah. second that. Oh, oh I I second that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, when people talk about um, influencers, you know, it's like, well, I call myself an inspirer because I, you know, I don't want people to do little versions of me. I just want you to do your own thing, your own handwriting, you know. Just want to get up to speed with you. You just do things just so fast. <laughs> yeah, I have naps in between those. <laughs> you don't see those. <laughs> Thank you. Any more? I just want to say fantastic. I'm just so happy to be here. Oh, and bless I'm you. Following your project, I think that what done. Thank you. It's very difficult when you've got two friends staring at you because that's, that's when I sort of halted a bit because I was like, oh. <laughs> don't think about them. <laughs> What's your next project? Well, I've got two projects at, at the moment, maybe three. No, actually, I've got more than. Anyway, so I'm, I'm doing Tree of Life for Kidlington Methodist Church. I've got to finish off the 
uh, International Festival Glass, uh, three mm -hmm. panels, which uh, we started last weekend, which was fabulous. It was a really good project. Lovely place, Riverside House. Lovely, mm -hmm. lovely. Uh, in Stourbridge. Um, I've got a wall. I've had a wall built in my garden. <laughs> I've run out of wall. I've run out of wall. So I've got 12 feet by five feet uh, breeze blocks built. And I've got a plan because um, you'll see in the portfolio, um, I didn't have a chance to put it on, uh, on the um, PowerPoint presentation, but it's... Um, inspired by the Desi pub project I did of uh, Indian men and women dancing. So I want to have a representation of about 12 or 14 people dancing from different parts of India. And I mean, political India, including Pakistan, and Punjab, and you know, South India. So it's gonna be everyone like, yeah, it's gonna be very positive and lots of swirls of colors and lots of bling. <laughs> So it'd be great. <laughs> the house won't be open then. He's going to start putting more walls up. <laughs> we'll do the basement and then it'll all collapse. <laughs> Tar knitter in the hands. I've had people from Australia, from Africa, from America come into the winter. And, you know, Airbnbs, there's little hotels, there's, you know, all sorts of places you can stay. Yeah. And uh, uh, you mainly do recycled stuff, don't you? Like it's mainly uh, yeah, and that's why you bought. But you know, even the tiles, even the yeah, and mainly, yeah. I mean, tiles. you know, these tiles, these colours, <laughs> they come from an end of line yeah. um, warehouse yeah. near me. They call me Mrs. Mosaic when they see me. <laughs> Hide everything here, she comes, you know, all that kind of banter that blokes do in shops like that. Yeah. Massive warehouse, you know. But yeah, and they actually, one time before we were going to Pier Massens to do uh, the project for Isadora in Germany, um, when was that? 2019, you know, she did this huge project. Mm -hmm. um, the stairs or something. The stairs in uh, yeah. Pier Massens or somewhere. Yeah. So it was it was fantastic. So me and um, Tamara Froud uh, mm -hmm. went over in her van to the <laughs> place because I wanted to show her the place. And they said, where have you been? We've got a pallet for you, he said to me. It's like, so, forklift truck. And then I, <laughs> and I said to Tamara, that's going to Germany. <laughs> We're taking all this. And we used all of that for, uh, for the mosaic there. And I did a, um, a peacock, like an entrance to the, mm -hmm. to the fairyland, you know, and uh, Carrie Reichardt did her doorway as well as part of it. She calls me her brummy doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not use vitreous tiles at all? I have used a bit of the old vitreous, yeah. Can't deny a bit of vitreous. We like a bit of iridescence as well on that. Mm -hmm. you, know, the, you know, that first mosaic I was well, telling... Yeah, well, actually, that's not that's not vitreous. That's, well, but that's it's uh, glass. ish. It's ish. ish. Glass, are we still on, on video? Are we still mm -hmm. on video? Oh, are we? Okay. I can. Um, okay. Oops. Now, um, I don't sort know if it's in Zoom it. over there. Uh, oh, it's tiny on this one because it. Yeah, because I've. This is yeah beginning of, beginning of term new portfolio. You see, mm -hmm. so I because I was doing this for you, but you know, that, that mosaic that's, uh, that no, you'd have to sit, you'll have to sit, you'll have to come round. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry um, guys. This is, this is the one by the, the back door and I've used vitreous tiles there on the floor because I wanted to try out different things, you see. Mm. Let's, let's do this so that you can see. Can you see? Can you see everyone? Can you see? You know this one, actually. You know this one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but, you know, it's all for the viewing in this uh, folder because I, want to, I wanted to show you, you know, extra photos of the, the garden and the house and things like that. But, uh, oh, and that's, uh, that photograph is at the bottom of, of uh, yeah, you can see. 
and all sorts of folks like um, lovely Stephanie Roberts in the front. This is this is from 2014 from Grat magazine. Yeah. <laughs> Grat. Grat. <laughs> Grat. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I wanted to show you bits and bobs, but I didn't know whether to sort of cut up tiles and whatnot and things like that, but you know, gives you an idea of what what I do. So feel free to look through the portfolio and you can ask me questions if you want to look through those. Are you ever going to sell your house? Never! <laughs> Never! Feet <laughs> first, I call it. Feet first house. <laughs> Charge people an entrance fee. Yeah, people have said that. People have said that. Yeah. I know somebody who did that in London. I can't remember the name. Stephen. Person. Stephen in Dulwich. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know him as well. We know each other. Yeah, we email each other. Okay. He doesn't do um, yeah, yeah he does social things, media. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't do social media. Yeah, he does crazy stuff with yeah. you know dolls and whatnot. Yes. It's quite yeah, spooky. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, there's always an option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there is always that option. Sounds very punky with those dolls. I oh, know. It, oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> I have you seen that house? Was, at the summer exhibition, there was a, a doll. Maybe it was him. Yeah, it's near it it's a a picture. It's near the picture gallery. It yeah. Dog, yeah, yeah. It was very funky. Yeah. Do you remember? Yes, it was lots of dolls in a place where we didn't actually look at it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've done loads of mosaic everywhere as well. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sells his stuff for quite a lot of money, actually. Oh, right. Surprise! How much it sells for? Ah, but it's all that. It's all the thinking and the work. Okay. I'm not. I'm not disrespecting Stevie's work. It's. I think this is fabulous. I think we should wrap up the talk. I give a big. Applause to Caroline. And um, that's also thanks for joining here on Zoom and um, <laughs> come for the next event and have a good evening, everyone here. Be the same. Tschüss.